Brent Venables heading into his third season at Oklahoma, looked to run towards the SEC, as he stated at SEC Media Days. We're here today to talk 2024 season preview for the Oklahoma Source. Yeah. The fanatic, but we keep it 100, keep it real. That's the only way we know how to be. Talking that sports talk, you know what I'm saying? Straight out of South Carolina, upstate, yeah. yeah. SEC. Yeah. yeah, the F-A-N-A-T-T-I-C, the fanatic where we keep it OG. We talking sports, so I call it. Welcome well, to the fanatic on the fanatic sports network. It's your boy, Coach I. And I'm here with the stat guy. What's going on, stat guy? Hey, what's going on tonight, coach? Hey, man, we're here to talk about the Oklahoma Sooners, man. You know, we got a lot of channel support from our Oklahoma Sooners brethren. Shout out to Bishop Franks, man, for being a member of the month on the channel, man. And listen, if you like college football, go ahead, like, and subscribe. We talk college football all the time. We do season previews, game previews, uh, weekly live streams. Just make sure you tap in with us, man, so we can... Uh, have some fun. We got, as we stated, we got a member of the month. We do a member of the month once a month. Uh, we got one level of membership, $1.99 to become a tailgate supporter. And uh, you get badges, uh, emojis, member shout outs, uh, and, and access to the fan added discord where you can talk some trash and just have some fun with other fans and other fan bases, man. Also, if you're headed to any of the games this year, check out SeatGeek. Use promo code Fanatic Sports and you can get twenty dollars off your first purchase. If you're going to the games, why not get some money off, right, Stat? Hey man, you know we always trying to find a way to save a nickel or a dime around here. That's right, man. Let's go ahead and jump into the season preview for OU, man. Listen, just to recap quickly, the 2023 season, uh, they had a much improved 2023 season uh, after that six and seven start in Brent Venables' first year. They did go ten and. Uh, three last year with the bowl loss to Arizona, but they beat eventual national champion runner-up Texas uh, in the Red River shootout, which they do on a frequent basis. Uh, they showed some, uh, you know, defensive improvements as the year went along last year. Uh, the Gavin Sawchuk finished the year with uh, five straight hundred-yard games. Um, but one of the things is they did lose Dylan Gabriel from 2023, and I know we'll talk about key players and losses and things of that nature. But they they made some improvements uh, last year. I think none of them, none of the OU fan base is happy about the Kansas and the Oklahoma State loss, especially the Oklahoma State loss being the last uh, Bedlam in the foreseeable future anyway. So just to recap quickly on that 23, 23 season, what's your thoughts on their season last year, Zach? Yeah, I mean, obviously the 10 wins is nice. Um, uh, the bowl game, you, you know, bowl games, you look at a bunch of different ways. Oh, so-and-so didn't play or whatever. But this was a chance for people that you're going to see this coming year be the guy. And the bowl game didn't go as planned. Um, a lot of turnover. I mean, six turnovers in the bowl game, ugly. And then obviously you missed it. Horrible losses to Kansas and then losing the last bedlam. Just crazy as far as what that season could have been without that. Right. Right, and one of the players that uh, had kind of a, I would say, a good and bad game was Jackson Arnold, their uh, t highly touted freshman, was a former five-star. He's returning at the helm this year with, uh, you know, Gabriel going off to Oklahoma, I mean, uh, Oregon. So uh, we'll look to see what he can do this year at being the full-time starter. It's always different when you get those snaps, uh, all full-time starter snaps, you know, going into the season. I know it's some high expectations for him. Other people, uh, as far as some losses, I would say they lost uh, Tawi Walker, one of their running backs. He went to Wisconsin, if I'm not mistaken, and they lost Caden Green, their center, along with the rest of their offensive line. So those are some key losses, but some key players they brought in. Uh, they brought in uh, Dominic Williams, D-line guy from TCU, uh, highly disruptive. Des Malone, DB from transfer from San Diego State. Um, and Dion Burks from Purdue wide receiver. So what do you what are you thinking about some of the additions they made with all the losses they had? Yeah, so for me, the the big thing is on that offensive end, they only returned four starters, but it's a couple wide receivers and the running back saw Chuck. And so you at least have weapons for Jackson Arnold starting out, which I think is gonna be huge. Um another key loss that you didn't mention was the loss of the offensive coordinator. And you know how we feel about replacing your center, your offensive coordinator, and your quarterback in the same offseason. 
Right. Those are always huge because those are the three guys responsible for coverages, play calls, and getting everybody else in the right position. So that is going to be something to look forward to uh, this season for Oklahoma. And like you mentioned, they only bring back four starters with more than at least six games of starting experience. Um, the old line is where it's going to be for OU. You know what I'm saying? They brought in a couple. They brought definitely hit the transfer portal hard for that. You you hope they can do as good as they did at their previous stops. Uh, they got a good offensive line coach, one of the best in the business. Uh, so you you hoping this season, you know, saying he can get them together, uh, especially uh, trying to protect the first year starter in in you know. I don't know if he how many games he played in, if he's a true sophomore, Jackson Arnold, or a redshirt freshman, but a highly touted guy nonetheless. All right, man, let's take a look at some of the games and talk about some of the games that we think could be key for Oklahoma. Now, I think if you watched the channel and followed along, man, we don't we haven't made any bones about how Oklahoma definitely has the harder of the two schedules between Oklahoma and Texas, the two new people, new teams in the SEC. Uh, and one of the biggest reasons why Oklahoma's schedule is a lot tougher is not just the teams that they play. Stat guy, it's the road games. You know what I'm saying? They get Tennessee at home on September 21st, but then that's their opener to the SEC. Welcome to the SEC moment. You know, you got Jackson Arnold versus uh, Nico Iamala Ava. Listen, both of them in the same class. I think Nico was ranked a little higher than Jackson, but both, I think, were five stars. Uh, the difference is Jackson gets them at home. Nick Nico's on the road. And then you talk about at Auburn, at Ole Miss, at Missouri, at LSU. Brutal. Brutal, Absolutely right? Brutal. Now, brutal. I mean, that's, that's not even to mention Bama at home. <laughs> right. I mean, you because you look at that and it's like, man, and, but, you know, this is what we talked about with Oklahoma coming to the SEC. There is no, and I mean, I know they got beat by them last year, but there is no Kansas hiding around the corner. Like, there's nowhere. I mean, we both know a bad Auburn team can catch you at Jordan O'Hare. Like, it, they just can. And so there's no, like, there's no hiding spots in their SEC schedule. They were done zero favors. Well, the good thing is, the, the, to what you said, the good thing is coming to the SEC, you see them all coming. That's not like... Like you said, right. there's no hiding spot. You didn't, I, I know, like, you know, without Jay, da, without Daniels last year for Kansas, they didn't see Kansas coming like that. They always beat Oklahoma State. So they didn't, I don't know if they necessarily saw Oklahoma State coming. Like, in the SEC, one of the good things is you can't say you didn't see them coming. I don't care if it's Auburn and they got Peyton Thorne at quarterback. You can't say you didn't see them coming because, like Brent Venable said at SEC Media Days, running towards the SEC. Right, running towards them. So let's take a look at the schedule and do our win game. If, if you have played along with us before, uh, we try to see what Vegas, you know, gave for the win totals for the year, and then we go through and try to do the same to see if we match or better or worse than Vegas. We give a point for a win, none for a loss, and a half for a toss-up game. All right, and then uh, we'll take a look at it. And I want OU fans, get in the comments right now. Let us know. I think Vegas has them at seven and a half, right, Stat? Yeah, seven and a half. Let us know if you agree with Vegas, what games you're looking forward to just as a fan, and then what games you're looking forward to, uh, you know, that might be tough on the schedule than some people might, uh, you know, more than some people may think. So let's look at that schedule, Stat guy. All right, taking a look at that schedule stat guy, man. I think they just they I mean easily I don't think there's any reason for concern. They start out three and oh for sure. I'm with it. All right, and then they get their first SEC uh game and it's at home versus Tennessee. As I mentioned earlier, both uh highly talented quarterbacks that came on out in the same class, both five stars in Nico and Jackson. Jackson gets to be at home in front of the home crowd. I'm gonna give him a half here because I do think uh, you know. I think Heupel in that offense is going to be ready. Plus, they got James Pierce on the other side for, for the defense. Yeah, I'm going to give them a half here as well. Um, first taste of SEC play, and that offense for Tennessee should be problematic, but I think Oklahoma can score just as easily against Tennessee. So it should be a this should be probably one of the better games for Oklahoma this year. Right. Then next week they go to Auburn, uh, to Jordan Hare, to take on the Tigers. Uh, I think Oklahoma's the better team here. 
but I think everybody knows when Auburn is uh, picked to be the uh, underdog, that crazy things happen at, at Jordan Hare. We'll see if OU can withstand that, which – Again, I think they're the better team. I think Hugh Freeze is a heck of a coach, though. So I'm going to give him a half here because it's on the road. If it was at Oklahoma, I'd give him the win. And I am going to give him the win against Auburn. I just I worry about how good they're going to be now with Hugh Freeze there. You never know. Look out in a couple of years. But I think for year one, I think Oklahoma is going to go in there and take care of business. Yeah. Now that game could also be tougher because of coming off of that Tennessee game. But then they get a much needed uh, – by a week before they take on the Texas Longhorns in the Red River. Um, I'm giving them a win here um, right now. Unless Texas shows me something in the first half of the season that makes me want to pick them during that week, they just, oh, you just own them. So um, I know that uh, Texas got the win a couple of years ago, but they just owned them. So I'm going to give uh, OU the win here. So I'm at uh, four, five, five right now. And I'm going to give them um, a half against Texas. Um, end of the day, it's a rivalry. I think that it could go either way. Um, and so that puts me at five as well. All right. And then going into the – you got the SC uh, Gamecocks, your Gamecocks coming into town. Again, I think they're just uh, top to bottom more talented team and they're playing at home, which is hard to win in normal. So I'm going to give them a win here. Yeah, if you would have seen the South Carolina video, you already know what I got going on. Unfortunately, I got Oklahoma winning this one. That's right. And then they take a trip to Ole Miss, which I think this is going to be another hard road SEC game. Uh, Ole Miss typically plays uh, really well at home. If this was on the road, I might get OU to all right win here, but I'm going to give them a half here at Ole Miss. So going to Oxford, going to the Grove, the one saving grace here is I believe this is the noon snoozer, as me and you like to refer to it. Um, but I, I think Oxford will be too much for OU. Give me Ole Miss winning. All right. So you're at six and I'm at six and a half. Then they beat Maine. I got them at seven and a half. I'm sure you seven. got them at yeah. seven. All right. And then uh, going to Missouri. Now, historically, they've owned Missouri, but I think – Sometimes uh, I think Drinkowitz is a weird guy, but I think he's uh, turned it around. It's looking promising at Missouri. They returned a lot of their guys. Now, they did lose their defensive coaching staff, almost all of them. But uh, we'll see if that actually matters. They're playing at Mizzou. Uh, no, yeah, they're playing at Mizzou. So um, I'm going to give them a half here. All right. I, I know both fan bases have this game circled. As a big game, um, obviously, OU fans remember Mizzou from back in the Big 12 days. Mizzou fans obviously want to beat their chest that they won 10 games with an SEC schedule last year. I think this will be very interesting. It's at Mizzou. Give me the give me the Tigers to win this one. All right. And then they get a bye week before they take on the Crimson Tide coming into Norman with a new coach. A lot of talent. Highly. Uh, like, I guess, a highly touted quarterback as far as the NFL draft is concerned in Milrow. I think Alabama is going to gonna win this one. I know it's at Oklahoma. I think it'll be close, but I think Alabama is going to win this one. So uh, I'm still at eight here. Yeah, what a what a horrible time to have your bye week right before right before the Crimson Tide come rolling it down. Give me Alabama in that one. All right, and then they go, they finish the season at LSU. This game is already slated either at an app, it is at 3.30 or 8 o'clock. I think for Oklahoma, they want it to be 3.30 instead of 8 o'clock. It's just hard to win. The LSU's defense ha it definitely leaves a lot to be desired. So it might be a shootout, but it'll be at LSU. So I'm going to give them a half here, though, because I think Oklahoma has the better defense. Yeah, going to, going to Death Valley is definitely different. If that game ends up being a night game, I believe it could be really problematic. Um, but like you alluded to, LSU's defense definitely leaves a lot to be desired. We also don't know what their offense is going to be without Jalen Daniels. So give me um, OU for the half. All right. So that finishes me. I got them at eight and a half because I think this season they either are eight and four or nine and three. So I'm right there in the middle, but higher than Vegas for sure. And I'm right there with Vegas. I got him at seven and a half. And I'll be honest, my floor is seven and five, and my ceiling is nine and three. And I think they're going to fall 
somewhere within there. Um, but it is crucial that they start off hot because that final three game stretch is absolutely brutal way to end your season. Right. I mean, to be honest with you, if you take out Maine, they end the season with Ole Miss, Missouri, Alabama, and LSU. So again, SEC definitely didn't do them any favors, but I guess all we can say is welcome to the SEC. Listen, all you fans get in the comments, let us know again, you know, what games you're looking forward to, uh, what game might be a trap game because of where it falls on the schedule. Uh, we always talk about that schedule, where you play, when you play always matters, not just one game individually. So there you have it, man. Hey, we give our predictions for the OU Sooners. Let us know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Share it with some more OU fans so we can get in there. And again, shout out to our member, one of our members of the month, Bishop Franks. Appreciate you. We appreciate all our members. And this is me, the coach I, stat guy.